Hey, what's up everybody out there in YouTube world? Welcome to a very special video. Uh, this is over 40 years in the making, okay? This is a very special tribute to just the Sylvester Stallone movie knives, all right? And a very special salute to the knife master, Gil Hibben. Okay. Now, my longtime followers, all you see is a bunch of knives. A bunch of knives, 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 knives. I've been collecting forever. All right? But it had to start somewhere. All right? There's a method to all the madness. Okay? And, uh, yeah, I have been doing this for a long time. And, yeah, hang with me. Um, I'm going to try to, you know, not make this, um, as, you know, too long. There's a lot to talk about, a lot to get into. So, hey, listen, let's just get into it, all right? All right. First, I want you to picture 1976 time frame, okay? And I'm 10 years old. My bedroom was just covered with posters, wall to wall. You couldn't even see paint, okay? I'm going to show you like little photos of basically what was on my wall. All right. So let's take a little walk. Okay. Then we're going to get to the knives. First and foremost, my childhood hero growing up was the Lone Ranger. Okay. The original Lone Ranger. I must have been about four or five years old when I first was turned on to him, the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Then when I was about six or seven, Evil Knievel. Oh, I wanted to just grow up and do that. That's what I wanted. I wanted to ride motorcycles, jump off ramps on a horse though. <laughs> I had a fascination with Jaws, too, all right, in 76. All right, I had this poster, you know, in the room. But I think the most photos I had hanging up in my bedroom were from these guys. Yes, kiss, ladies and gentlemen. They were the end-all, be-all to every band on the planet. Yes, they were like my favorite band when I was like 9, 10, 11, 12 years old. <laughs> All right. Oh, when I was 9 years old, there was my hero right there. The $6 million man. And what's funny is, you know, I grew up, you know, got out of the Navy and uh, met my wife. I'm married 28 years now, and it's so funny that she was a huge Bionic Woman fan. So that's why I included her in this little picture here, all right? My sweet wife, Linda. We'll get to her a little later. Um, let me see. Yeah, so anyway, um, the $6 million man. So, of course, I just didn't have dudes hanging up, right? And sharks. I had one of the most famous posters of all time, Fair Fawcett. Ugh. Gorgeous. My favorite Charlie Angel, Charlie's Angel. And of course, I did not like the Dallas Cowboys, but I sure did like them cheerleaders. Come on, who didn't like the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders? And this was the poster I had hanging up. Okay, so now we're talking like third, fourth grade. This guy was a hero. Henry Winkler, Arthur Fonzarelli. Was he not the coolest? To me, he was the Lone Ranger and Evil Knievel rolled into one. This is the poster I had. Him on that triumph. I believe that was a 49-50 Triumph. Check that out. Hey! So how cool is it that he's in a movie? 
I was like nine or ten when I saw this. The Lords of Flatbush. And around the same time, Happy Days was huge. And then, one of the greatest films of all time, Rocky, comes out. So now I'm just beside myself. What's going on? And this was filmed in, like, my hometown, Philly. I'm a Philly boy, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm like, you're telling me that Fonzie and Stallone are in this movie together. How cool is that? So now, this is how it all started, believe it or not. So this was my fun, you know, times growing up with all these childhood heroes. All right, and this, this went on from like, you know, 76, 77, 78. And uh, pretty much, you know, stayed with that. Which then led to, are you ready? Are you ready? Rambo, 1982. First Blood. And there is the Jimmy Lyle special. Well, it's a replica. All my knives are replicas. Okay? A lot of you guys might not know this, but there's a book by David Morrell called First Blood. I do believe it's still available for purchase. If you ha have not read it, I highly recommend it. It could change your life. It changed Stallone's. <laughs> this was written in 72. And Stallone took the book and adapted it into screenplay. Rambo. Now, when I saw this knife, I'm like, I gotta have it. All I got was those cheap knockoff versions. You know, I must have had two or three of them. They broke, I lost, whatever. All right? Now, I did have a couple butterflies, and I had a buck 110, but, you know, they were nothing like something like this. This is just, you know, a jaw dropper. Okay, let's go to 1985. Stallone's still going. Rambo 2. And there is the Rambo 2 knife. All right. By the way, these are uh, Hollywood collectibles. Now, not only do I have the Rambo 2 knife, I have the little boot dagger. All right. I believe uh, these little guys are kind of hard to find. They're uh, numbered as well. All right, then comes, so I had to kill everybody. There he is, the genius. We're going to get to him in a second. Rambo 3. You guys heard me say this before. I saw this movie when I was in the Navy in 87, 88. And I'm like, there ain't no way they're going to make a replica out of that. Ain't going to happen. I got to move this chair out of the way, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry. Lo and behold, they did. What a beast. Now, there were some prototypes made, which I would love to get my hands on. All right? First, we had this, this big old guy right here. Put him right here. The Rescue Mission. Look at that beautiful beast. I heard that Gil Hibben made this and he used a bicycle handle for the handle. He's got the, uh, you know, the serrated cutouts, you know, the saw spine. That is beautiful. Now, I heard that a little later on, Gil made a hundred of these for sale. I didn't see it. I had no chance. So if anybody out there has one, hello, hit me up. I'd love to see this beauty. 
right here. And there was another one from Rambo 3. That was kind of fascinating. And that was... It's, it is, you know, basically the knife that, that they're selling, re replica, minus this piece right here. This piece right here had like a spring-loaded thing, and it. it would pop out. You could throw it. I guess like Batman would throw one of his things. But I heard Stallone said, nope, don't want it. So they stopped, you know, production on the prototypes. But so many of these knives were already made. They just kept it as is with that cutout all by itself. See? See right there? So they just mass produced them. Again, I would love to get a hold of one of these puppies. Okay? Oh, here's a picture of Gil with the original rescue mission knife. Gil, if you have another one, please hook me up. All right? I see he's got one. And check this out. That knife is actually, <laughs> was used in the mine scene in Rambo 3. It was used. You see it right here. Here's a still from the scene. That is the knife. That was not used in the movie, but used in this scene. <laughs> they said, oh, too late. We already filmed it. Moving on. And that was the end of that. So it did get a little screen time. But how many people actually caught that? That that wasn't that guy. Okay? So there's my little uh, Rambo 3. Next, we move on to the Rambo 4. It's a little dark down here. Gonna have to just take this out. Simply called Rambo, the fourth installment. There we go. Apparently, Stallone loved him so much, he said, we're using you again, buddy. Make this one crude. Make it crude. Okay, now, here's a fact. Gil Hibben officially holds the record for the most knives used in Rambo movies. His were used in three, four, and five. Yes, they used his machete in Rambo 5. Jimmy Lyle, one and two. Okay, here's something confusing. In Rambo 4, okay, you with me, everybody? In Rambo 4, the director's cut, you see Stallone throw this knife away, the Rambo 2. Okay. Later on, he makes the machete. But uses the sheath from the Rambo 3 knife. He just cut out the bottom part of it to make it fit. Now, it would have made more sense in the director's cut had he thrown away number three because he's using this sheath. Do you guys know what I'm saying? You with me? And here's just another movie poster of uh, Rambo 4. All right? I like that one because he's actually holding the, the machete right there. All right, I need two seconds to change things up. I'll be right back. It's going to get better, ladies and gentlemen. I promise you. Hold on. Yes, Rambo 5, ladies and gentlemen. One of my favorites. Rambo 5. Um, we see, in 2008, we see John Rambo. He finally gets convinced to go home. And in 2008, the last thing you see is him heading down that long driveway. He's back to his original home, the ranch in Bowie, Arizona. Keep that in mind. And then, of course, you know, 10, 11 years later, we pick up, and he is basically 
you know, he's helped raising his niece. Apparently her father was a, you know, real piece of crap. And when she turned 18, she wants to go track him down in, in uh, Mexico, bad part of Mexico. And uh, he's telling her no, no, no. She finally says, okay, Uncle John, I won't go. Well, we know how 18 year old, 18 year olds are, so. Anyway, if you guys didn't see the movie, please do, okay? Please do. I'm not gonna spoil anything. I'm just telling you, it's a great movie. It's not what you think, all right? Now, I have some opinions and some observations in reference to this fantastic movie. First, let's take a look at the knives, okay? Gentleman by the name of Deepner Pohl created the Heartstopper, the MK9, and the MK8. The replicas, replicas are still no long, not available. So I had ants in my pants and had this one made per spec by my friends at the Kukri House. Everything is pretty identical except for one or two things, and they did that for obvious reasons. They don't want to be sued, okay? Let's call it what it is. <laughs> so, but this is, is so much better than the replicas. I heard the replicas are made of uh, stainless steel, where this is this amazing 52100 steel. I use this all the time, all right? I actually wanted something to use because I don't mess with the replicas. They're for collection reasons only. But these guys, I use, okay? And I will get the replicas, you know, just to keep with the, you know, the boxes that say Rambo Last Blood, you know, all that good stuff. This guy here, the MK8, was sent to me, donated to my channel from a YouTube friend of mine named Jed Hornbeek. I am still speechless over this. He did such a phenomenal job. I can't get over this. The way it feels, I love that copper guard, the, uh, the G10 handles, he used the chain ring bolts. Uh, sharp on both sides, just A plus amazing, amazing. I can't get over it. Can't get over it. But, you know, I'm wondering why didn't Gil get called upon to do this movie, the knives for the movie? And apparently he did. He did, ladies and gentlemen. Well, first of all, as I mentioned earlier, they used his machete from Rambo 4. Okay? And he's over the moon. You know, it's so awesome that they used that knife in Rambo Last Blood. But he did send a couple prototypes out to Sylvester Stallone. You see the, there's the machetes that he used. And here we see something that Gil Hibben made called the Hibben Arizona. Remember I said earlier, pay attention to, you know, where John Rambo's from, Bowie, Arizona. Get it? Bowie, Arizona. <laughs> now, these are available. These are available. Get them while they're hot. These are Super sharp, super beautiful, super amazing. These are numbered. And usually the prototypes get sent back to the knife maker if they're not being used. Apparently these weren't sent back. 
which is leading me to believe that this buoy Arizona will be used in a, in a future Sylvester Stallone movie. Could be Expendables 4. Could be Rambo 6. Hmm. Rambo 6. Yeah, I have an idea for Rambo 6. Yep, we're going to get to that in a second. We're going to come back to that. All right. Let's go back to this heart stopper real quick. All right. This is an observation. About nine, ten years ago, Gil Hibben made a knife called the Assault. All right. The Gil Hibben Assault. I got a weird feeling. A strange feeling. Let's get a good look at this. Can you see this? Okay. I got a strange feeling that Dietner Pohl looked at this Hibben Assault and came up with this. You know, it's got the sub hilt. It's not as long, you know. Let me just lay this on the table. We gotta, we gotta get a better look at this guy. Sorry about that. All right. Give me a sec. The MK9, to me, is almost, it's just a bigger version <laughs> with a few little details that are changed of the Hibben Assault. This is just an ob observation. And uh, this has been around for, you know, nine, ten years. And I just got a weird feeling that he might have looked at this and said, I'm going to improve on a little things, you know, and, and make it just that much better. Just wonder, did he give credit to Gil Hibben? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Gil. Gil, Gil, Gil. You notice I got my uh, Navy flag out? Huh? Well, there's a reason for that. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, salute to Gil Hibben. He is a United States Navy veteran. How about that? Guess who else is a Navy veteran? This guy. We got a lot in common, brother. Check out this old picture I found of Gil. Gil during his Navy days. I believe he was in in the late 50s. Or I was in in the late 80s. Check out my man. These are both Gil Hibben when he proudly served the United States Navy. And I dug up some old photos of me, too. They didn't come out so good. There's an oldie but a goodie. That's me, ladies and gentlemen, about 1986, 87. And this is dark. Oh, memories, memories, memories. I lived in Guam, you know, for three years, so. That's why my uh, skin's pretty dark. <laughs> Good times. Good times. So anyway, Sylvester Stallone, he became a Hibben fan. You know, for he was a Hibben fan for quite a long time. So I did a little research, and this blew me away. Check this out. Check out Gil Hibben with Elvis Presley, ladies and gentlemen. See Gil Hibben on the far right? Elvis, far left. Elvis is holding a knife, the Kenpo, made by Gil Hibben. And this is like 1973. How cool is that? Another knife I would love to get my hands on. That or the Kenpo 2. Now, the Kenpo 2 is 
basically the Alaskan survival. If you guys ever seen it. All right. This is the Alaskan survival knife. It's basically just like, you know, the Kenpo 2, except it doesn't have that logo, the Kenpo logo right there. So that's like the third knife I'd love to get my hands on. First, that, you know, that green bicycle handle, uh, sawback rescue mission. I'd like to get a hold of the Rambo 3 uh, with that, with that, that blade that goes in the slot. And now the Kenpo 2. But guys, if you didn't know this, that the survival, the Alaskan survival is basically just like the Kenpo. Although I'd rather have the Kenpo too. Okay? There. I said it. I said it. <laughs> now, I got one more thing to say in regards to the Hibben, Arizona. Okay. Have an idea for a movie. Dear Sylvester Stallone, read the script. <laughs> I'm going to be in this movie, if you don't mind. I was down at the Creed II film shoot for four days, and uh, I was the only guy wearing a, a cowboy hat. And you know what I'm talking about, Mr. Stallone. So here's what I'm thinking. Just around your Vietnam tour, you met up with some, uh, some you know, wild woman, and uh, you had a kid that you didn't know about. And that kid is me. <laughs> come on, take this with a grain of salt. And um, all of a sudden, I come to your uh, house in Rambo 6. I knock on your door. And uh, apparently, I'm in a crisis and I need your help. And I know what you're going to say. Nope, I'm done with that life. And I'm going to say, come on. Come on, lives are at stake. And I know, deep down, you're going to want to help me. So I shared this idea with a fellow YouTuber named Vincent from Drawing My Way. This is my shout out of the day. Drawing My Way. So he took my idea and he came up with this drawing. You ready? Are you ready? Check out. Me and Rambo. He, he sent me the drawing in the mail, but it's not here yet. So this is just a screenshot. It didn't turn out that good on my screenshot. But once it does get here, I'll, I'll do a video. So anyway, there's uh, Rambo and his son. Um, that would be me. Rambo is holding the Hibben machete. And I'm holding the Arizona buoy. Rambo, Cowboy Seabot, New Blood. What do you think? Huh? You up for it? Can we do it? <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, my next video, I'll give you the, uh, the finished, you know, project. But, hey, this kid did pretty damn good. Huh? I'm digging it. So, uh, listen, this video is not over yet. This is going to be called part one, and I'm going to finish this with the Expendables knives and a bunch of other Hibben knives in my next video. So digest this for a while, ladies and gentlemen, all right? And I uh, hope you're having fun, and um, see, you in about, see you in about another uh, week or so, all right? Take care, everybody, and remember, stay safe. Wash your hands. There's nothing like being quarantined with the world of Hibben knives. I'm telling you, there's nothing like it. All right? Have fun, everybody, and I'll see you soon. All right? Peace.